What's up, guys? What's up, little man? My son's coming out here. Wanna say hi, Luke? Hi. So, I have uh, some updates real quick. Won't be too long of a video. Um, I'll, I got a tool I wanna share with you guys. So for all you tool lovers like myself, um, I'm gonna share that tool and why I think it's pretty neat um, with you guys. So, uh, but real quick on the truck, I've got, uh, the truck's going on his first road trip tomorrow. We're going to take it to uh, the guys over at Amateur Hour Restorations. They're gonna help me work on the wiring. I've got everything segregated out. I've got the dash wiring, the column wiring, the um, uh, rear wiring, if you will, the brake lights, tail lights, all that kind of stuff kind of laid out. I gotta clean up the truck a little bit, get it ready to go on the trailer. Um, so we're gonna do that tomorrow. Hopefully we can get it all wired. Um, uh, the problem that I ran into is a lot of the engine wiring harness has the same wires as the body or chassis harness. And so I'm trying to figure out what I need and what I don't. And because I've never wired up a vehicle before to this extent, um, I needed to get some help. And Herb over at Amateur Hour Restorations, check those guys out on YouTube, um, decided to uh, host me and we're going to do some work on uh, this truck. I think even Herb's oldest son is going to help out as well. So shout out to him um, for helping out. I don't know if Dave and Ed is going to be there. Hopefully that they're there too. Uh, those guys are really knowledgeable about swaps and stuff. So, uh, but we're going to be doing that. I did a little bit of cleaning on the truck. I did get the side emblems installed. Uh, that was fairly easy. Got them painted up, got them installed. So that looks pretty cool. Um, in the front of the truck, I've got uh, some of the headlights installed. You see there in the driver's side, the head, the, the low beam and high beams are on there. I got the 100 emblem painted last night, I think it was. I've got um, the marker lights ordered, guy on uh, the 55 to 59 GMC and Apache Facebook page. Gabe uh, is hooking me up with the marker lights, so shout out to Gabe if you're watching this video. Um, I gotta get another headlight bucket, not like the bucket bucket, but like the ring. I gotta show Gabe that too, because I think he's thinking I need something else. But anyway, um, I gotta get that and then I can finish out wiring up the other uh, low beam light on the passenger side. So that'll take care of that. The engine, like I said, I've kind of got wiring started to bunch up a little bit, meaning that I'm kind of getting it routed where I want it to go. And uh, that'll take care of that. I'm gonna paint this uh, GMC uh, hood emblem today. I got it all stripped down, got all the old paint off of it. Normally I would have left the old paint, but the, um, the GMC riding, the guy who I bought the truck for, when he was a kid, he repainted this and it didn't look very good over time. And so I had to strip the whole thing off and redo it. That's, that's whatever. I'm not worried, really worried about that per se. Um, and that'll take care of that. And so I even got, the other emblem on the passenger side here, that's all said and done. Uh, we're also going to work, I don't know if we're going to get it done. Tomorrow I want to work, Herb, if you're watching this, I want to work primarily on the wiring. I know we talked about doing the upper um, header panel, but I think we need to focus on the wiring as a starting point, and then we can figure out the header panel later on. Um, I got the uh, rear tail lights ordered. They should be here on Monday. I took the old ones off and they're gone. Here's the plate that I've got on the truck. Yes, it is a 58 plate here in Indiana. You can run uh, vintage plates on your vehicle. So I elected to do that. Uh, I started cleaning up the bed rails, getting off all of the old, um, uh, what is it? The old, uh, paint and scale and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I got to clear coat that now and inside of the bed itself. And then that'll be all set and done. And then I'll put the wood down and that'll complete it out for the bed. Uh, let's talk about the tool. So for the tool lovers out there, I got this tool and my, sh my boxes are crazy, but um, it is what it is, right? So uh, this tool I had, these are the pipe vise and I was I had them for a couple months and I was like, man, when would I ever use these and how would I use them? Um, and I found the best application form that I, from my application, the best 
way that I can use them. So I was putting on the brake booster and the proportioning valve and all of that stuff in the reservoir. And so I got to run brake lines, obviously, right? So the old ones were pretty tight on there. And this thing works so good. I'm going to take you guys over to my donor S10 truck real quick. And I'll show you guys on an actual application why I think that this is a really cool tool. If you're doing brake jobs and you don't care about the fittings, uh, this is an awesome tool for breaking them free. Now, the, the main thing there is if you don't care about the fittings, because this will eat up the fittings, right? It's going to mar them up. Um, and that's just the way that it goes because of the teeth. But if you... Hopefully there's no bees in here. Pull out this one here. You see, I didn't prep for this, so there's this is just live action. So if you're trying to take off a bolt, you can put it on there. Let me see if I can find a good one here to grab onto. Maybe this one here. You can put it on there, and the ratcheting function of this is really cool. Let me get it set. I'm not doing this tool this video any justice but if you put it on there you can put a lot of force luke come over here and hold this camera for me buddy no i'm on this side man you want to come over here and hold that for dad okay you got to hold it like this let me show you just like that give me the other hand so one hand goes here other hand goes there don't block the lens okay Okay, let me show the people. So this one here, guys, if you put this on here, it bites really good, like to the point where, let me see if I can break this free. Ah, this one's on there, my goodness. Let's see if I can get a good bite on it without busting my knuckles. <clears throat> nope, I cannot. Maybe I should've got the longer one. Ah, there we go. Okay, so that's, oh, we're out of frame. So that one there, you can see there, and then you can just move it back. You don't have to reposition it. Get real close, Luca. There we go. You see that, guys? Just swing it back, and it re, it relocks on, and there you go. So this thing is really cool for that. Um, it's, it's got a really good bite force, and, uh, and you can just kind of rat, you can use it as a ratcheting pipe vise, if you will. See, just like that. Oh, sorry. Just like that. And it just keeps working, it keeps biting. And the only thing is, like I said, it will bite, it will tear up the, 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 the fitting a little bit. But overall, this Isn't works. The oh, the glass over there? So it bites really, really well. Watch that glass right there too, buddy. So if you guys are wanting a pipe vise or you're wanting something to kind of help you break lines free uh, this is really cool and I think this would be a great tool for like the junkyard where you don't necessarily know what size you're going to need you get yourself I think this is called like the micro 5 and there's like a micro 10 so this would be the 5 inch and then um, this would be the 10 inch the micro 10 and so this one would be probably even better because you can get more leverage. So we struggled on that a little bit because it's not mounted to the truck or the vehicle, but um, this would give you even more leverage. So yeah, check out Pipe Vice. Uh, this is a cool, really cool tool. It comes in this nice pouch. It does say made in the USA. I don't necessarily think the devices themselves are made in the USA because they don't say it. So they're probably not, but the pouch itself, I guess, is possibly made in the USA. So check out pipevice.com and uh, get yourself one of these. Even has a little holder, so that works really that works really well, I think. Uh, I've been playing with the um, Capri Tools wrenches, and somebody asked me. I'm gonna take a seat here. Somebody asked me to um, compare them to like a snap-on wrench, I guess maybe. And I thought I kind of did that. Um, I would say that uh, they're not, you know, if I, I if I compare, let me see. If I got a metric wrench 
the snap on. Here's a, here's a snap on 19. And here's the um, here's the Capri. Uh, they're about the same for the standard snap on wrenches. They're the same length. The, this both are they're both non flight drive or they don't neither one of them has the teeth. Um, the Capri the snap ons is here. The Capri is there. You can see that the width of the the jaw on the Capri is a little bit wider than that of the Snap-on. And that's primarily probably due to the fact that they're, I mean, it's really hard to say because obviously Capri doesn't know what Snap-on's heat treating process is and vice versa. So you could theorize that it's thicker because maybe the metal, the metal is not quite as strong as the Snap-on. And you know, that, that's one assumption that, but we don't have any, I don't have any way to prove that. Um, but one, normally when something's built a little bit thicker, it's because it may not be as strong as something that's a little bit thinner. Uh, but you know, open ends, they're going to slip. It doesn't matter if it's really thick or really thin, it's going to strip, uh, because this is how the metal behaves. Right. And more times than not, it's not necessarily the wrench itself, meaning that the wrench is too soft. It's the, it's the fastener. You know, you got to think that not every time you're working on a vehicle, or are you up against a grade five or a grade eight bolt? A lot of times you're using that Chinese metal and it's just soft to begin with. And so it doesn't really matter if you have a really strong high heat treated tool or not. It's just going to, it's going to deform and it's going to slip. That's probably why Snap-on incorporated the flank drive in there because even on those softer style bolts or fasteners, the teeth will bite into it anyway. And then it's going to give you the additional, it'll compensate for the softness of the bolt, I guess is what I'm saying. But like I said, the length is the same. The beam thickness is a little bit thinner on the snap line than it is on the Capri. Uh, if we look at the box end, the Capri on the left, the snap one on the right. Uh, the box ends are fairly close in terms of the thickness of the wall. There's not a whole lot of difference there. They're both 12 point wrenches. So uh, am I saying the Capris are as good as snap on? I can't say that. I can't quantify that. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have a way to test the hardness of the metal. Um, so it's all, you know, circumstantial. It's all subjective, right? Meaning that uh, depends on how you use it, depends on the uh, mating bolts or whatever you're using it on, the hardness of that, how much force you apply versus on one wrench versus the other. There's a lot of factors in there. So to say that one tool is inherently better than the other without any specialized features is probably not a, a good argument to make. Just my opinion from an engineer. That's that's just my assessment. So. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like the tool I wanted to share with you guys today, but check out the pipe vise, uh, Capri tools. I mean, for their wrenches, the wrench sets come, you know, complete set all the way up to 24. I think it is no skips. I mean, that's a really good set for the money. I think it's like, I don't know, 179 or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it costs, but it is not expensive comparatively to the, um, the snap on. Now I saw a post online and I'll, I'll wrap it up with this. People were talking about how to buy Snap-on tools for, you know, like what's the best way to buy them. I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but Caterpillar, um, the tool, the Caterpillar sockets, I know for a fact, uh, are made by Snap-on. There's no question about it. No, there's no point of you arguing against me about that. I know 100% that Snap-on buys their, or Caterpillar buys Snap-on tools. Uh, I'll show you, I got a couple examples. This is a, a cat branded socket, right? You look at the font. It even has the uh, Snap-on uh, date marker code on there. Up there, you see above the, at the USA. So it has it right there. So, and if you compare this, this is a, uh, what is this, a 15 millimeter? And we go over here and we grab a 15 Snap-on, exactly the same exactly the same right so um there's no difference so i guess my point is is that if you're looking to get snap-on tools for cheap check out caterpillar now you can go to the caterpillar dealership and you can buy the caterpillar tool you can buy the order the sockets directly from them you can also buy them offline online i have an account with caterpillar don't ask me how but i did i do 
and um, I can order all the Snap-on sockets and stuff that I want and uh, get them shipped directly to me, but I always go to the dealership to say hello to the guys and I can pick it up. Um, some stuff like picks, I tested this out. Some of the tools like picks, you can order a Caterpillar pick part number and you will get a Snap-on pick. Here's the example of what I did. I ordered the Caterpillar part number and this is what it came in. It came in a Caterpillar box, but they gave me a Snap-on pick. So I know I see a lot of posts on, on uh, Facebook, on the Snap-on groups, and people talk about that. And it's, it still seems like there's some question as to, not, as to whether or not that is true. I'm telling you unequivocally that is true. Same thing goes with the screwdrivers. Now, if you order Caterpillar screwdrivers, they are the Williams version of the Snap-on screwdriver. So they basically set of... You can't tell the difference, but they are what the Williams ones would be because they only come in one color, which is black. Um, and I'll show you. It'll be this one here, but it'll say Caterpillar on there, but it'll be this. Okay, so just to let you know that if you want to get tools cheaper, much cheaper. So like you say, well, what do you mean by cheaper? If you were to buy a snap-on socket set, let's say a 3 8 drive deep socket set, that's gonna run an impact, that's gonna run you, let's say, what, three, four hundred dollars. If you order that same set from Caterpillar, it's like less than 200, or maybe just a little bit over. I can't remember. I'll show you guys the website one day so you can see it. But it's a significant, it's greater than 50% off. I <laughs> put it that way. Significant. I ordered a quarter inch drive socket set. My brother, Mike, has it. I gave it to him as a gift. It was a quarter inch drive socket set. It came with the shallow sockets, a ratchet, a, a swivel extension, and, or a swivel, um, and a, uh, I think it came with one extension, socket extension, for $108. That same set on Snap-on's website, branded Snap-on, is like 400 bucks. So that just shows you the significant amount of savings you can get. So go to Caterpillar's website. And uh, if you guys want me to do a video to show you, and I'll order something, and I'll take you through the entire process. If you guys leave it down in the comment section, I need 10 people to say, show me the Caterpillar ordering process. If you say that in the comment section, I'll do it, and you guys can see it happen. So, all right, guys, that's it for today. I'm going to call it. I'm going to hang up my boy here a little bit and play around in the shop. But that's all I got for you today. We'll have another video for tomorrow and uh, you'll tune in to see that video. All right, guys, peace.